In this video, we're going to show you how to set up a Spectera system using the web UI. First, what you'll do is open up any web browser. This can even be on a wireless device if the Spectera system is connected to a Wi-Fi network. You'll then go to the browser and type in HTTPS colon front slash front slash and then type in the IP address which you can find on the front panel of the Spectera base station enter and it will take you to the website you'll need to go to advanced and proceed and then you can get into the base station web interface when you first set up a system it'll require you to make a new password and then as you go into the system in the future you'll just need to enter in that password in order to gain access to the web interface now you'll see the web interface itself on the top left, we have our RF configurations area. Then to the right, we have base station settings with more options here. We then have our audio interfaces where you can look at your Dante, MADI, word clock, and default IO settings. And then below, you'll have your mobile device area where you can see all of your body packs for the system that is attached. The first thing we want to do is set up an RF channel. Before we do that, we always want to do a scan to see where a good place to put the RF channel would be. So we should take our antennas and put them into the scan mode. We can put one or both antennas into the scan mode. We can even make this a little bit larger so we can see it here. And you can even click here in order to go to the full scan page. You can also go to the top of the screen where you hit frequency scan and by clicking here, we can get to the larger frequency scan page. This will then show us our frequency scan. Um, and actually you're seeing right now a MIB antenna, which is uh, giving us a nice clean spectrum. I can switch over to my A antenna, which is in a different location. Uh, this is actually on top of a very noisy rack right now. And so you can see we're getting a lot more interference and a lot more exaggerated uh, information from my A antenna. My B antenna is nice up and high out of the way of rack interference. I can then change the reference level. I can change the sweep time to make it slower or faster. Um, and it will even show me the timestamp. So currently it's, it's in real time, it's, it's updating. But if I go ahead and turn off the scan, and let's say I wanna use that antenna for uh, something else, like a different RF channel, I can turn this off, keep my scan here, but show me at what time this scan was done. So I can look to the scan page at any time, even if I'm using my antennas for something else, and see a freeze frame of the scan that was done and at what time it was done. At the bottom, it'll show us our available uh, frequency range. So in the Americas, in the US, we're able to do 470 to 608, and that's the license that's on this machine. We're also able to do part of the gap up here uh, at a lower power output, and so you can use any of those frequencies. At the bottom, what you're seeing is the center frequency for the TV grid. And this is the frequency that we choose in order to set our RF carrier. And so you can pick any of the frequencies that you have here at the bottom, as long as they're within the green section. And those are the frequencies you can use to place your Spectera system. So now that we've done a scan, we decide what RF center carriers are going to be great. We've chosen 527 and 497. And in order to change this, all you have to do is go into this area here. You can go ahead and change it to whichever frequency you found that's nice and clean. If you accidentally put a non-center frequency, like 498, you'll see the system automatically will give you a, a small red error because this is not an available frequency to use in this region. So go ahead and change it back to 497, and now it will give me my green check mark, and all of my devices will start to repair to the system. I now need to add antennas to this. So currently my two antennas are both doing scans and they can be doing scans simultaneously in two different areas so you can see uh, what's happening. You can even have up to four antennas doing scans in four different areas. 
But now I want to use one of these antennas for my RF carrier. So I will go ahead and put my A antenna onto 497 carrier here. I can also put my B antenna if I want on the same carrier and that will add additional coverage and more robustness to my system. And here we can see the level of interference under each of those antennas on this particular frequency. So you can see my B antenna has, is up in the air and it's a little bit cleaner, so we're getting minus 93 dBm of interference below it, and that's where the noise floor is. But because my A antenna is sitting on top of a noisy electronics rack, it's seeing a little bit more noise floor, which will yield us a little bit less range for that antenna. This little checkbox here allows you to turn on and off each of the RF channels. So you can see right now, channel one is muted and channel two is active. If I open up one of these, I can change the bandwidth, I can change the power output, which have settings of 10, 20, 30, or 50 milliwatts. And that is global for this entire channel. And then I also have the ability to change the RF startup. So I can have it be whatever it was last. I can have it always start up muted or always start up active. And that can be different across the two RF channels. So if you're gonna be in a different location each show, you can have it always start up muted as to not interfere with other systems that may be active on the stage. You then have the power output here. It'll show you what it is. And we can actually turn this on and you can see this is in six megahertz at 100 milliwatt. So there's a small indicator here. Then you also have your channel capacity here. So this will show you your channel capacity and this will tell you how much of that channel you are currently using. You then have all of your antennas. So I can put up to four antennas on this RF channel or I could put four RF antennas on the second channel or four scan antennas um, or any combination thereof. You have four ports on the base station and you can use each of those ports to have the antennas on channel one, channel two, or RF scan, and you can move them around as needed. So first you wanna make sure you have an active RF channel, and then you wanna enable the pairing mode here on the base station. Once this is active, you can then start putting your packs into pairing mode. In order to put the pack into pairing mode, you need to have the pack in the off state, and then you press and hold the power button until the light turns blue. So you just keep holding it, you'll see the pack powering on, and then it will go into the blue state. Once it turns on fully and turns blue, you can start seeing them appear in your mobile device section. They'll take a few moments to find the base station, and then they will start to appear. Once they show up, you'll get a pin code here. Now you don't need to do anything with that pin code, but you can check if you're setting up multiple systems at the same time that the device that you're pairing is the one that you want. It does save the names from the previous use. So if you had used this with a different system, um, it does save names here. And you can just check the pin codes as well. If you are setting up multiple systems at the same time, you can also press the top button on the pack itself in order to have it switch to another base station. So let's go ahead and pair these just by clicking. And we'll click them here and we'll pair. I have a fourth one coming on as well. We can make these a little smaller. Fourth one just turned on. And now we can see they're all starting to pair. Lights will flash green. And once they go solid green, we have all of our devices paired. So now we have our devices here paired. We can then start to add link modes and start to set up our system. Now let's talk about how to unpair a device. So you'll see we have the unpair here, but it's currently grayed out. That's because I have a link mode active. So in order to unpair the device, I need to make sure that there are no active modes, and then I can go ahead and unpair the device. I can click confirm, and then the device will disappear from my system. The device will then automatically go back into pairing mode, so you can either repair it with the system or pair it to another device. In order to deactivate pairing mode, I just go ahead and click here, and now my system is set up. Let's take a look at some of the settings on an individual mobile device. So let's open up Sebastian here. So first I can change the name here, and that will instantly update. I can change the RF channel, decide whether it's on channel one or channel two. Note that you cannot move them while they are active. So you'll need to make them inactive and then you can move them from one to the other. 
You can also see the info here, and you can see it's connected, and you can actually see which serial number that it has. You can click the Identify button, which will have it flash, and then you can also change the brightness of the LED. We'll give you battery life, and then we'll also give you the ability to see if there is any interference that the pack is seeing itself. You'll have your signal level here, and we've given you an ultra-sensitive meter. So actually, your signal level, as long as you're above minus 70, is actually pretty good. Then you'll be able to see your audio level of the microphone once we enable a, a microphone mode. And then you have all your microphone settings. So you can change the auto detection. So it can either auto detect whether it's a mic or line input, or you can force it to be either mic or line. You then have the ability to add cable emulation of short, medium, or long cables uh, to emulate different guitar cable lengths or instrument cable lengths. You also have a low cut filter, so we can change that low cut filter depending on the source that we have. And then we also have the preamp gain. Now you can enter in any preamp gain you want. So I can enter in a gain of 5 dB. Click anywhere and it will set it. I can also go up and down in 1 dB increments using the up and down arrows. I do have a test tone available and I can set the volume of the test tone. I have some presets here, but I can also go up and down in a single dB, up and down. And then at the bottom, we have our link mode that we can set. So this will give us our different link modes that are available. We have max range, link density, live link density, live, live low latency, raw and raw low latency. Um, and this is gonna give us different parameters using different percentages of the channel. So let's go ahead and select the live mode for this particular microphone. Um, and then we can actually decide what channel it's gonna be on. Now on the microphone, we can have this set to more than one output if we so choose. So I'm gonna put this on output one, and then I can choose on output one whether it's going to be Dante, Matty one, or Matty 2 and I can have it on all three or any of the three at the same time. I can also add a second channel if I want, so I can put it on channel 2, and then I can decide I want it to just go to Dante 1, but not Maddie, and on 2 I just want it to go to Maddie. So I have the ability and the flexibility to do that. Then let's move over to the IEM side. So on the IEM side, we can set a mode, and it's currently set to the live mode. If we want to get to the mono modes, we deactivate this, and then we can go ahead and select from mono or stereo. So let's go back to our stereo live mode, and then we can select a different audio channel. So I can select Dante, uh, any of the channels I want. One and two are down at the bottom, five and six are down at the bottom because they're being used by other channels. And if I want to group them together, all I have to do is select the same channel. So I'll go ahead and select one and two. It'll automatically default to the Maddie because that's where my group is set. But I can change this to Dante or Maddie two for my input. I then have the ability to add a focus mode and this will allow us to be dual mono in the center and then I can change the mix between the two mono sources, very similar to our previous IEM systems. We can pan the device left or right, um, and if we decide, we can actually go in 1% increments using the up and down arrows. We have volume control, and this is uh, able to be done real time. So I can go ahead and change somebody's volume and change that to 0 dB, um, or I can change it to whatever I want, and this will adjust the volume of that pack instantly. I can change it in 0.5 dB increments. So if somebody's asking you for just a little bit more volume and they're not able to access the volume encoder on the pack, you can quickly change it and they will instantly hear the difference. I can also set minimum and maximum volumes here of the pack. So I can decide that I only want the uh, user to be able to turn the volume down so far and I maybe don't want them to go uh, so high. So I can give them anywhere from a full range where they can turn it all the way down to it's off and all the way up until it's loudest possible volume, which is plus 27 and a half dB, extremely powerful headphone amp. Um, or I can give them a very small range that they can move between, or I can even decide to give them no range at all. And I can set both the top and the bottom to the same, and now the volume will be locked at zero dB. This gives you the ability to preset what you want the user to be able to do, and also uh, gives a big level of safety. If you do set the minimum volume higher than where it's at, it will move up. But if you set the maximum volume higher, the volume will stay at the same level until you or the user changes it. Another great feature 
of the Spectera Web UI is its ability to tell whether a headphone is actually plugged in to your SEK when an IEM mode is active. If we take a look at Jan's body pack, all the way over here on the right, you see our headphone indicator. So currently I don't have any headphones plugged in to any of the SEKs. Once I plug a headphone right into Jan, which I'll do now, you'll see that it can detect that a headphone's been plugged in using plug detection. If the headphone happens to become disconnected during use, the indicator will go away and you can actually tell if the headphones are unplugged in the middle of a show. So here in the routing page, we actually have the ability to see all of our audio networks. So our 32 channels uh, can be either set to Dante or Maddie, and that can be separate on the IEM side and the microphone side. And then I can also uh, change our audio link modes. I have the ability to route everything here. So if I want to move Jan from five and six over to three and four, I can easily do that here. And because he's in a stereo mode, it'll automatically put them together. I can also move him to something further out, like 11 and 12. And I can change that from Dante to Matty 1 or Matty 2 uh, right from the routing page here. If I go ahead and group some of these together, all I have to do is put another channel on the same channel, and it will automatically put them in a group. And now they are not using any additional resources. They are both listening into the same resources. And this will free up more space uh, and put them on the same mix. On the microphone side, I can do the same thing. But actually what I can do here is because we have a microphone or an instrument, I can send it out to multiple outputs. So I can decide I want to have Sebastian set to, let's say, channel 1 and also channel 10. And then on channel 1, I can decide here which outputs I want him to go to. So right now he's only going to the Dante but I can have him also go to the Maddie. I can have him not go to Dante. And on 10, I can do something different. So I can have him going to all outputs on one and 10, or I can have him going to just some of the outputs on one and 10, depending on what I'd like. Let's talk a little bit about channel capacity. So as you add more microphones or more IEMs to a single RF carrier, you're utilizing more capacity as you can see here, we have a small meter next to each of the RF carriers, and that shows the amount of capacity that you're using. So currently this carrier is using 31.25%, rounded to 32%. And you can go to each of your SEKs, and as you add modes, so we're gonna add, let's say the raw mode here, you can see my channel capacity increases. That one increased it by another 6%. And if I change it to the low latency, that'll go up even more. So as you fill your carrier, once you've filled it with enough mics and IEM modes, uh, it'll be full and that's when you can go to a second carrier or another base station to add more channel capacity. If you put SEKs on the same mix, that will use up no additional channel capacity. For example, we have Martin here on audio channel one and two for Maddie on the live low latency mode. So if I close up Martin and I open up Eddie here, I can go ahead and add him to the same channel. So all we have to do is select the audio channel one and two. And actually if there's no link mode, it will give you only the used channels. So I'll add him to one and two. And you'll see my channel capacity didn't change at all. That's because Eddie is now listening into the same audio channels as Martin, not using up any additional resources. Thank you.